Wow, you guys, you may think that we are in a fairy tale wonderland, but we are not.、Um, nor did it come from the Aladdin's oil lamp. But what is this? What is this? We are here. Have someone to explain for us. He is an internet hit in China. Has a follower of totaled four million, right? <laughs> yes, Mr. Yes, David Evans. Welcome. Hello. Good to be here. Yeah, sorry. Introduce your guys for us. Wow, the smoke really smells. <laughs> Tell us, don't worry. What is in that? What's in this? So what?、Uh, what we did is actually a very simple chemical reaction. So、mm. just take the liquid is a solution of hydrogen peroxide in water,、mm. H two O two, and actually it's slowly decomposing into oxygen and water.、Mm. But to speed things up. Because your audience did want to sit around for a few days、yep. watching it slowly、uh, decompose, we added a little bit of catalyst. a catalyst,、mm. manganese dioxide. So that little, if you're watching closely, maybe you saw I had a tea, actually a tea bag containing the manganese dioxide. Put it in, and the reaction happens really fast. So it creates a lot of oxygen, but also it's an exothermic it reaction.、Hot? It gives out heat. Okay. So what?、Wow. So as well as the oxygen, which of course you can't see,、mm. you're actually getting a lot of steam. So the steam comes into the air, condenses to make the water droplets.、Okay. So what we're seeing, like the genie from Aladdin's lamp, is、yes. actually steam coming into the the cold air. Wow! I feel like something I learned in high school really <laughs> turns into reality. But again, I want to remind you guys, we are here live in Beijing University of Chemical Technology. Indeed,、right? yes. You also can call it BUCT. Yes, BUCT、so、you've been for sure. A professor here for some time, right? Yes, I actually. Uh, I've been here in China probably as long as about as long as you have.、So、oh, really? Nineteen ninety-six.、So、I that's came to China. Twenty-some years. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so, I, but I'm originally from the UK. But actually, I've been interested in China for a very long time. When I was quite young, about eleven or twelve, I had two hobbies,、mm. and one was chemistry because I could do experiments yes, like this. Yes, and you can see all the、exactly. themes and all that. But my other hobby. At that time, was China. China is your hobby. Yeah,、wow. I was really, I was interested in chemistry and interested in China. So this, you can see by my white hair when I was eleven or twelve. It wasn't <laughs> a few years ago. It was、mm. a long time ago, fifty years ago.、Mm. So at that time, it was before China's reform and opening.、Mm. So unlike now, where people can get news about China、mm. on CGTN and、so、all sorts no- of other places all, all the time. So your knowledge on China the, is very limited. Back the, then? At that. That at that time there was very little news about China,、mm. so I think it was that that attracted my attention. I wanted to know more about chemistry by doing experiments,、mm. and I wanted to know more about this huge country and all these people、right. so you really uh, that we knew bring, nothing about. So,、really、so I've been interested. In, chemistry in China. Exactly. So、mm. I've been interested in China and chemistry for fifty years. Okay. So the first time I came to China was nineteen eighty seven. And that really confirmed my interest. So from 1987 to 1996,、okay. I came once or twice a year, visit some universities, give some lectures, and have some have some holiday, so that I could see how China was beginning to develop.、Mm. It was quite slow then compared to the pace of change now.、Mm. If anyone, if any of、uh, the audience came to China at that time, then、uh, you'll know it was very different from now. But it was changing, but slowly.、Mm. So. When I had the chance to move to BUCT in 1996,、mm. because I'd seen those eight or nine years of changes, I could see how China was really going to take off and、mm. become big. So, when I had the chance to move here, I thought this is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.、Mm. Uh, I'll take it. So I moved. But of course, most people weren't. It, China wasn't on most people's radar in '96. So、mm. I'm telling my friends, my colleagues back in the UK. I'm moving to China. Then, some of them, more polite ones, said, "You're very brave." Others said, "You're crazy. You're what science? Can you right, go in China?" Right, especially you didn't speak the Chinese language back then, right? Well, when I came in '87, I、uh, I couldn't.、Mm. Uh, when I came in '96, I could. So from '87 to '96, each time before、bit? I came, I, I studied a bit of Chinese,、mm. so I could communicate when I got here. So actually, if you ask anyone who came to China in the '80s. Did you learn any Chinese? It wasn't hello, ni hao, or,、mm. or 
Thank you. Xie xie. Very basic ones. You no, know, what everybody learned、mm. if you came to China in the 80s or early 90s was mayo. Mayo. There isn't any.、Mm. Because if you went to the restaurant, it was mayo, no food.、Mm. If you went to the shop, it was mayo. There wasn't what you wanted to buy. You went to a hotel, it was mayo. There was no room. So、right. any any foreigner who came to China at that time will tell you that they remember mayo, mayo. But, but, Whereas now, of course. We, yeah, we ev- there's everything. The, there's everything. <laughs> yeah, just take a look at the labs. We have the screens here. We have all those modern equipment, and everything has changed a lot. It's changed fantastic. So when I came to the to BUCT in our lab, we had some Chinese produced equipment.、Mm. Whereas now we have a lot of modern, state of the art imported equipment. So we have the same equipment that you'd find in a good lab in the US or Europe. So, right, so in twenty plus years, it's changed out of all recognition.、Then. But also,、um, since we are、um, live stream on our CGTN app, also make sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts. That includes our Weibo, Twitter, and also、um, YouTube, and of course our app. And just to remind you, this is a series of one of our special programs, Spring Festival 2020. As this Chinese grandest holiday is coming up, so talking about the Spring Festival, what do you know anything about it? Well, of course, I've been here for more than twenty spring festivals, and actually,、mm. you might not guess where I usually spend the spring festival—not in Beijing, but in the countryside. In the countryside, with、okay. friends who work in Beijing.、Mm. But when they go back to their village, then I go back with them because all my friends in Beijing say, if you want to really experience the, the traditions,、mm. go back, go to the countryside.、Mm. So that,、uh, so yeah, of course, there are so many. Tell so me many some traditions. traditions that impress you the most.、Uh, The thing is, there's always a story,、mm. so that everywhere you go, you find you can find the character Fu pasted on the wall, bringing you、uh, good fortune. Right. And when it's usually upside down, and maybe if you don't know, if you don't recognise Chinese characters, you wouldn't know it was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> But it's always upside down. Why? Why? Is that? Because the word for upside down. Sounds similar to the sounds the same, or the character is different to the word for arrive. So、yes. putting your good fortune character upside down means the good fortune will arrive we'll, this yes, year. We'll so there's always a story. <laughs> What about other traditions? Do you know that、um, parents or like、um, people who are senior than you usually give you red envelopes to those younger ones? That's right. Them、uh, good luck and all that. Yes. So the, so、Where's、it's, it's, it's a great time. It's、Where's、a great、mine? time for the kids and the young people. Yes.、Yeah, Do so, I have one? Well, look what I have here. I really do have one. So that、uh, wow, you have a red、you. envelope. So that, wow, thank、uh, you so much, Professor. You guys look at it; it's pretty thick. Okay, let's. Oh, so how? All right, how I can't you, be more excited. How much is in there then? Okay. What is、right. this? What's, what's in this? Is it a letter to me? What's wrong with my eyes? Yeah, can't that, see that, anything. That doesn't look. That doesn't look. What's、uh, going that on? Doesn't look.、Uh, What happened? Doesn't look very exciting, does it? So normally, in,、uh, the kids will open their red, pa- red packet and we'll, expect we'll to find、cash. some money. Yes, where's the cash? <laughs> not, not, a, not a blank piece of paper. So, <laughs> so what's on this? Let's have a look. Is it really a blank piece of paper? So let's have a look. Oh my gosh! Is that some kind of magic? What have、doing? we got? No, it's not magic. It's chemistry. Happy Chinese New Year! Wow. Happy Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year! Wow. How do you do that? What's、so、going on here? So how did the、here? chemistry? Get, how did the chemistry wish us Happy Chinese New Year? So the letters were actually written with a an acid base indicator, which、mm. is colourless、mm. in acid solution. So that's、um, why I opened it. There's nothing, nothing on it. So it looks like there's nothing on it, but of、mm. course they were there all the time.、Mm. But the letters were colourless, and as soon as I spray an alkaline solution, then, is that corrosive?、Uh, it's a d- very dilute solution, so、okay. it's not. It's not. It's not corrosive. But、uh, a strong alkali is very corrosive. But uh, uh, for safety, this is a very dilute solution because the acid base indicator doesn't need a strong solution.、Right. A very dilute solution so, will bring the colour. So there we, we have in the lucky red colour. There we have Happy Chinese yep, New Year. Yeah, red is very special here in China. It means lucky. So that's why we are seeing red all over the place because we really want to bring you that kind of festive environment to all of our viewers as the 2020 Chinese New Year is coming. So Happy Chinese New Year. You Happy、guys. Chinese New Year! But as the professor has been saying,、um, some of the liquid may be corrosive. So, what kind of preparations should people get to get into the chemical lab in order to get not hurt? Yeah, of course. A lot of people say to me, "Well, chemistry is dangerous. 
It is, right? Some, a well, lot of solutions are corrosive or poisonous. Let, let's think. If you drive a car, mm. is it dangerous? Yeah, potentially. Cause <laughs> well, it, you sleep. If you drive a car, when is it dangerous? If you don't obey the rules, if you exceed the speed limit, mm. if you have a few glasses of alcohol, or if you're listening to, listening to your mobile while driving, it becomes very dangerous. Right, but so if you obey the traffic regulations, mm. then driving is generally very safe. So chemistry is exactly the same. So what so, are the rules that we need so, to follow? The most visible rule people associate with the labs, of course, is the lab coat. Yes. And we had the gloves as well, even mm -hmm. though we said it's not very corrosive, but for extra safety, we had the gloves as well. And but also actually, the goggles, right? the, the goggles are mm. the most important because the lab coat protects your clothes. Yes. If you spill something on your clothes and make a hole or a stain, you can buy new clothes. Yes. But if you don't wear the safety goggles, then your and eyes something, get something gets in your eye. Yeah. And where do you go to buy new eyes? So make sure you guys safety first, because we are here in a cap chemical lab. So we have our coat on, our goggles on, and also our glasses on. So if you follow us on, in your home, make sure to have all the safety preparations. Yeah, but especially the goggles. So every time you do an experiment, you should have the, the goggles. So if you look at any of my videos online mm. that you mentioned, then you will see I'm always wearing these very characteristic goggles with the yellow frame. So hopefully it stands out and reminds people, ah, Dr. Dai is wearing his goggles. So if I do an experiment, I should be like Dr. Dai and wear goggles as mm. well. So um, you were talking about your short videos, right? You post stuff like how to like turn this magical stuff on. Um, I think most of your, like the people who are watching your videos are kids, right? There are, yes, a lot of young people are either still in school or who've recently graduated mm. so that uh, you know, sometimes then uh, I actually go and I go and talk as well as doing the videos online I actually go and visit schools and science museums and sometimes the kids will say to me yeah doctor die or they'll say they leave uh, messages on the uh, uh, on the video site saying oh, doctor die was in our school last week at, Wow uh, so um, when do you know that you're starting to get famous so can people recognize you on the street yes yeah, sometimes people recognize me in the street or in restaurants ah. on trains do they so they ask say, for aren't you doctor that uh, very often yes okay. so um, Chinese sh short a video industry is actually booming with all those platforms you know they've been uh, have some kind of internet hits like you and also other people some focus on makeup and you're obviously focused on chemistry so what do you feel about being like after getting so famous here in China yeah so that actually the reason why I, we started doing the videos it wasn't me because really you can see short videos are normally a, a young person's mm. environment so my assistant uh, saw Lurley. He went when he went back home to his home mm. for Chinese New Year so two, two years ago. It, all his friends, no, all his friends and relatives say you know, we use these short videos. So when mm. he came back to Beijing, he said to me, "Why don't we put a few videos on these short video sites of chemistry experiments?" Uh, he said, "I'm sure nobody will watch them." <laughs> I said, "Well, never mind. We're scientists, so let's do the experiment. So let's mm. put some videos on. If nobody watches them, we won't put any more on." Mm. Uh, so we put some videos on, and we found actually that quite a few people do watch them. <laughs> right. Actually, a lot of people like you. Make sure to post as many as you can during the Spring Festival time, because people will have a six-day holiday during that time, and they will have en enough time to watch you. Absolutely, yeah. So they're they're a great vehicle because, uh, although there are other, not just reaching a lot of people, mm. but they're also very uh, very accessible to everybody. So if you live in a big city, there are lots you of activities, you can go to science museums, but with these short videos, it doesn't matter whether you're in a big city, in a small city, in the countryside, as long right. as you have a mobile and a signal, you can reach then, anyone. then you can reach anyone. And also, of course, most people don't open up the mm. apps mm. to watch my chemistry experiments. They're just relaxing in the evening, sitting on the sofa, they want to have a laugh and see who's doing some funny videos, dancing or singing or whatever. Mm. So they actually find, some, of the, some people who wouldn't think they were interested in science actually find my videos by accident. Oh. Then they stick around and uh, watch more and, and maybe you know, then start looking at science sites as well. So it's a great way of reaching people mm. who perhaps didn't realise they could be interested in science. Right. A lot of people don't know that they're interested in science, but with all these, you know, really fascinating chemical experiments, they become interested in it. That's right. Because as I said to you, then I got interested in chemistry. I spent my life doing chemistry. Mm. 
because I started doing experiments when I was 11 or 12. So hopefully that some of the kids who watch our videos will get excited in the same way and they'll yeah. become... Uh, and if you're watching us, you have anything, you know, you have anything interested or anything, questions, leave us comments down below and we'll have our professor to answer them Okay, for I'll you. do my best. Okay. Um, my producer just told me we have a few um, questions already. Okay. Okay, let's see. What so do exam we have? time for the professor. Um, there's our David saying, Happy Chinese New Year, everyone. Okay. Thank you, David. Okay, thank Happy. You. We got another David know, there. Yeah, yeah, so lots Happy of Chinese Davids. New okay. Year. And um, there's also thanks to the safety regulations. Yes, safety is very important. Yes. So um, I didn't see any more coming up, but make sure to leave us comments down below and we'll have our professor who is an expert in the chemistry industry to answer all of them for you. So we were talking about the short videos. A lot of people getting really intrigued by the experiment you were doing. A lot of times when we are conducting the everyday lives, sometimes we don't know that it's, it's within the chemical, chemical sphere, but it's actually chemical, um, chemical experiments. For example, like when you eat too much and there's a kind of drug that you need to take, I heard that's a kind of chemical experiment as well. Yeah, so chemistry is absolutely, is absolutely everywhere. Mm. Chemistry is all around us. So a lot of people think you do chemistry in the lab, mm. like here. Mm. And once you leave the lab, once you leave the chemistry class, that's it. You're finished with chemistry. But of course, that's not right. So as you say, so that then during the Chinese New Year, just as like Christmas and New Year, people will eat a lot, uh, eat and drink more than they do yeah. uh, the rest of the year. So that you know, some people will then have uh, excess acid in the stomach; they'll mm. feel mm. uncomfortable. So if you have if you have excess acid in your stomach, mm. what do you do? Um, I you take actually a kind do. Of drug. You do, and what you're doing is actually very simple, very similar to what we did what we did here. Mm. So. Remember the red letters were written with the acid yes. indicator, which Colourless was colorless. Acid, yeah. And then we sprayed the alkali mm. and it neutralized the acid mm. and the excess alkali made the, made the letters become colored. Mm. So you can do exactly the same with the acid in your stomach. You need the acid in your stomach, the mm. hydrochloric acid in your stomach to start digesting the food. Mm. So you but if you, have too, if you have too much, mm. then that's when you start to feel uncomfortable. So as you say, you can buy some simple as antacid tablets. Mm. So these are calcium carbonate, but milk of magnesia, all sorts of alkaline materials but will neutralize the excess question. acid. Can you tell me how this works? So what it does is neutralizes the excess acid. Mm. So the acid and the alkali, acid and alkali are not friends, they're enemies. So you put acid and alkali together, mm. then the alkali will knock out the excess acid. Of course, you don't knock out all of the acid, you still need some, but mm. you don't need uh, too much. So if you have too much acid in your stomach, then you can neutralize it with these simple antacids. But if you really push the boat out, and eat too much, drink too much, then particularly when you're uh, when you've gone to bed, you mm. may find that you get acid reflux. The acid yes. starts coming up. That's how you feel out of your stomach, and you f you get heartburn. You feel very bad. So in that case, this simple antacid, the simple chemistry, isn't enough. Mm. So we can add another chemical reaction and solve the problem of the acid reflux. In fact, I we can see we can see how we can see how this works. So here we've got some lucky red liquid. And Is that sent for the stomach? that that's what we need so let's we can see how it works so if you take a little bit into the pipette mm -hmm. okay so squeeze it and then so at the moment it's a liquid mm. the, the material is dissolved in water but you put it into there mm -hmm. and let's see what happens so wow so you're getting little you can see little gel balls so the material in here it's calcium chloride. It's reacting with this material, which is sodium alginate. Is this poisonous? Can I take it? No, out? it's actually you've eaten it before. So that if you, when you eat the, uh, uh, when you eat the, uh, the drugs? Gel, gel type gel uh, uh, fruit gel, gel fruit gels, mm. they often contain alginate. But so you were doing one drop at a time. You can see what happens. Look, if I do it wow. continuously, then we can pull out a a nice long 
lucky red snake. So that, Here uh, we go. Yeah, so that uh, do an operation and make it. Wow. So there we are. So, so, that's so very, sim very, very simple chemistry. Two materials that dissolve in water mm. make a new gel type material that doesn't dissolve in water. So if we put those two chemical reactions together, we have one material which will start to neutralize the extra acid mm. and then another material which will make this gel. We can solve the problem of okay, the acid so reflux. So here we have this flask is a model of the stomach. Okay. So we have hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So pretend this is our stomach. This is our stomach. Okay. And then if we have a problem with the acid reflux, the acid will come out of the stomach into the esophagus. And that's the burning feeling is, is when it hits here. So mm. we need to keep the acid in the Down stomach here. and stop it, stop it coming out. So that instead of using the simple antacid, the calcium carbonate or the milk of magnesia, we can, so this one is the drug we're taking? Yep, so this is, uh, you can buy this in the chemists in the, in the pharmacy. Mm. So that, let's see what happens when we add this to the acid in the stomach. Okay. So you can wow. see, it's making, what it's making is the material that we had. You can see it, can you see, I don't, if, can you see that it's f***ing? Yes. So that's the... Calcium carbonate, like the simple antacid, is reacting with the acid to make carbon dioxide. Then the material sinks initially and the carbon dioxide lifts it up. But you can see now this gel material that we made here is also being prepared. So the calcium carbonate dissolves in the acid, makes the calcium chloride, which is what we had in this bowl, and the calcium chloride and the sodium alginate in the drug make the... So calcium argonate. It was so sort of block here, right? Exactly. So now you can here. see now you can see what a nice plug here, so that the acid doesn't come out, out of the stomach into the esophagus. So this Okay. So this guys, antacid will now actually This is the reaction you wanna hear. So um, you wanna see if you eat too much and you take the drug it sort of create a line there, right? That's right. It, you get a nice a little plug which keeps the stops the acid from reflux coming up. Coming okay, up. but it's, it. so it's very two very simple chemical reactions. Mm. So one to make the CO two, mm. and the second to make the calcium argonate plug. But I plug. have a question: so, Can they uh, can like the same be dissolved in our body? That, yeah, that's a very that's a very good question. Yes, so it slowly breaks down because mm. obviously you don't want your uh, your to stomach to be forever. permanently blocked. Yes. No, so that uh, it will it slowly breaks down. Okay, that's so how with, it reacts. With the churning action of the stomach, hopefully nobody's uh, uh, eating while they're watching. The <laughs> so the churning action of the stomach will actually break down the plug, so it doesn't okay. stay there permanently. So it stays there uh, to solve the problem in the short term, but then it gradually gradually breaks Dissolves. down. Okay, got it. So that's a very okay, good, yeah, very good interesting. question. I so, didn't know there so, are chemical yeah, reactions so inside that, our bodies. Oh yes, so so so. There, there are thousands of chemical reactions, huge numbers of chemical reactions going oh, on inside I? our body. I often, I often ask the ki often ask kids when I'm doing a, a talk, what happens to somebody if all their chemical reactions stop? And sometimes they're sort of a bit embarrassed to say, they die. <laughs> so I say, yes, game over. So yeah. if your chemical reactions in your body all stop, I'm afraid it's game over. <laughs> okay, so you want as many chemical reactions going on in your body as possible? Ab uh, absolutely. So you want all the, all the good chemical reactions, but then sometimes when we're ill, what it means is we've oh. got some chemical reactions that we don't want. So taking a drug okay. can actually then uh, stop those uh, harmful chemical reactions. So, okay. that, so you need a lot of chemical reactions, but there are some that you don't want. All right, so we finished that, another experiment. It's now time for us to check if we have any kind of new comments okay, or questions. Right. All right. Oh, we actually got more comments. Um, there's Yuan Lo asking the ma magical extravaganza of chemistry in daily applications as unrevealed by the passionate Dr. Dai, who humbly shares his wisdom of chemistry with great enthusiasm. Okay, wow, thank you. we got a okay, fan there. Right. Okay, this right. guy must have watched <laughs> you before. He knows you. And okay, what do we have for? It? Okay, there's a guy from the BUCT and saying, "Welcome, guys. You should apply ours, our our university." 
Okay, yes, do, please. Welcome to BUCT. The, Especially the, you've been here for 20 years and you've seen all the changes, right? We have all the modern equipment here in this university now. And uh, do you have any kind of like encouragement for people, uh, high school kids, so future enrolled in this university? Yeah, so we've got a great new campus as well. So we've mm. got a brand new campus with... Uh, modern accommodation, modern teaching, gymnasium, swimming pool. So it's a great place to study lots of enthusiastic teachers. And actually, studying chemistry and chemical engineering is a great career choice. So I'm sure lots of people think, well, if you study chemistry and chemical engineering, you have to go and work for a big chemical company or a pharmaceutical company. But actually, no, lots of people want chemists. So, for example, a lot of our, quite a number of our BUCT graduates go Mm. for banks. Banks? Because how do banks make their money? It's not from the money we, put, we keep in the bank in they our invest. account. They invest. So if they're going to invest in a huge chemi- new chemical plant... They'll have course, to need chemical Exactly. Experience. They have their own experts who can judge the finances of the project, but they need their in-house experts who can judge whether the chemistry and the chemical engineering is feasible mm. to make sure they don't waste, uh, waste the money on we a, got a done project. Question. So this one asks... What kinds of alkaline stuff to neutralize acidity in one stomach? Tell us. What so about? if you go to the pharmacist, go to the chemist, you'll find all sorts of, of materials. So it's simple traditional ones like milk of magnesia, which is just a magnesium hydroxide. You can buy aluminium hydroxide, aluminium trihydrite, ATH. Actually, one of the materials that we work with here in our lab, mm. we, we, we research, uh, we work with sandwich type materials. So they're like a, a, in a sandwich you have a layer of bread and a layer of filling, then a layer of bread and a layer of filling. And if you buy a sandwich, you can buy all sorts of sandwiches, right. different flavors, different brands. And um, but our materials are the same. So by changing the chemical components it. we put in the in the layers in mm. the bread and in the filling, we can make all sorts of different materials. So in the lab, we we've developed new materials which are used to protect road surfaces, for example, from ultraviolet light, yep. which are used in electric cable installation as fire retardants. But they can also be used as very good antacids, so that one of the materials that we work with is called hydrotalcite. Mm-hmm. Uh, contains magnesium and aluminium as the ions in the layers. Okay. And it's also a very good um, uh, material for treating acid in your stomach. Wow. See, it sorely breaks off. Yep, so it will, slowly, it will slowly break down. Okay, Yuan Lang, hope that answers your question. Okay, we have another audience saying, where are the fireworks? I have already prepared cakes and popcorns. He can't wait. <laughs> Let's bring the fireworks up. Well, but actually, so we were talking about safety. So if we were going to let off fireworks, we can't do it uh, in here. Mm. Uh, so, but uh, we What can, about something similar let's, let's to see, fireworks? Let's see if we can do a different experiment. Okay, okay so fireworks, are, hopefully you, won't be, you don't let off fireworks in your home. You will go outside. But since we're in the lab here, then uh, uh, we're going to... Safety first. Again, I want to stress you guys, um, we are inside a chemical lab. You can see we have our lab coat, our goggles, and also gloves on. If you're doing this at home, make sure you have your safety preparations to keep safe. Okay? All right. It's time to finally see some fireworks, but not real. We are um, trying to get something similar, Professor? Yeah, yeah let's see, if we, can, see if we can uh, see what we can do. But, uh, as we were saying, the Chinese Spring Festival, one of the most traditional thing is fireworks. I remember doing, when I was young, I often, often go out with my parents seeing all those fireworks get burned and it's so beautiful. Can we create that kind of feelings here in this lab? I don't know, but Professor, I trust you. I trust you, you have 4 million followers. You <laughs> better know how to make this work. Okay, so Let's we got two colors, right? Do. The green and the red. Wow. Very interesting. So what's inside here, Professor? By the moment, it's not very exciting. So it's just washing up right. liquid, washing it's up like liquid and food coloring. So that, uh, oh, so this is food color inside. Food coloring and washing up liquid. Okay. But what we're going to do is to... Can they make bubbles from the washing up liquids? Let's see. If you want to make bubbles, because you take a straw and blow, but what we're going to do is see if we can use chemistry to make the bubbles. So let's add the same 
solution, hydrogen peroxide, that we use. Will used. it react very fast? I think it's not reacting at all, is it? So, no. So we found that to make the Aladdin's genie, then mm -hmm. the hydrogen peroxide needed a catalyst to make it break down quickly into oxygen and steam. So that the washing up liquid is obviously not a good catalyst because it's not breaking down. So what we're going to do is speed up the process again. How so do we speed it up? What we do is add a different catalyst. So we don't add the black powder manganese dioxide this mm -hmm. time. So is the catalyst inside or no? So no what so the catalyst oh. the catalyst is in the catalyst is in here. And so, where? So this is the catalyst? This is the catalyst. So okay. this is a solution of potassium iodide. It's so, time. Guys, it may react very fast because we are adding catalyst inside. So don't so, blink. <laughs> so it's exactly like fireworks. When you set off fireworks, you light the fireworks, and what you don't do is look at the fireworks like this. So it's exactly the same here. You so, always stay some distance So we put it in and then move backwards rather than okay. forwards. <laughs> Okay, okay, so are, are you going to say three, two, one? Two, one, guys, don't blink. Whoa! <laughs> wow! Wow! So no fire, but that's all. That's so fast. Indeed, I didn't imagine yes. this fast. Yeah, wow! So, so this time it's just like the genie. It's blowing out large amounts of oxygen and steam. And we see but this. Why do we get this? We can, you can call this elephant's toothpaste. I think <laughs> there's enough toothpaste there for several elephants. Mm. So why is it the effect different? The chemistry is the same as the first reaction, but the effect is different because we've got the washing up liquid. So oh. the steam and the oxygen blows all of these bubbles, blows all of, these, all of this foam. And it reacts so fast with all the yes. catalysts adding. So, so catalysts can have a dramatic effect. I guess so. Happy New Year, you guys. You just see the fireworks out. Absolutely. Wow, with all those beautiful okay, colors. Right. So you yeah. can see it's still, still coming. Coming out. Wow. Yeah, it smells good as well. Oh, that's the washing up liquid. <laughs> oh, that's the washing up, okay. So, we better not say which brand, but, but guys, it smells. But guys, you see when I smell uh, this, uh, yeah. I use my hand. Yeah, absolutely, You yes. don't smell like, you yes. don't smell so like this. so that's the You're expert chemist's way, yes. I'm yeah. an expert chemist now. Mm, absolutely, yes. All right, yeah. with that, we um, will have to say goodbye to our audiences, but make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, that's our app, CGTN app, and our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and also our Twitter, Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Chinese New Year. Okay, Thank happy you. Chinese New Year. Bye-bye.